Meeple Nation Podcast, episode 440, September 2022 news, and end of summer salt con recap. Welcome, citizens of Meeple Nation. For the next 30 minutes, sit back and enjoy. Meeple Nation is sponsored by GameToppersLLC.com. Go to their website, check out what they have. They have gorgeous game toppers to fit in your favorite gaming space. They are modular. We took our game toppers to SaltCon this year and hosted our games on the Mycrofts. They turned a lot of heads. The mats are always head turners. They're beautiful. They have the stitched edge. Very high quality mats. Highest quality mats I've ever seen. Berkey does a great job with his product. He takes great pride in what he sends out to his customers. I promise you, you will not be disappointed what Game Toppers has to offer. Check them out, GameToppersLLC.com. We are the hosts of Maple Nation. I'm Nathan Howard. I'm Dave Holiday. I'm Andy Holiday, And I'm Douglas Stewart. Welcome to our September news. Before you jump into this news episode, push pause right now. Jump over to MeepleNation.com. Check out our website. There is blogs. If you missed last week's episode, or maybe you want to catch up on an episode from three years ago, they're all listed there on the Meeple Nation website. There's a link to our blogs. You can go through and read some of our insights. Pick our brains as a sort. There's also links to our bios. And then after you've read all that, you can send us an email at meeplenation at gmail.com and send us a cyber high five. And if you're super excited about the podcast, there's also a link to our Patreon page. We are truly humbled by those who have chosen to support and continue to support the podcast. We love it and we love you. If you would also like to support us, there is a link on our website. Just scroll down a little bit, follow that link to our Meeple Nation Patreon page. We really do love our patrons and we love all of you who are listening and supporting us in any way that you are. One thing that we would definitely ask that you do if you like what we do on whatever social media you like to use and share. Share the link to the latest episode. Every time you do that, it really helps us to gain some more exposure and we really, really appreciate it. This week, we are talking about September news. And SaltCon. Dave, how was SaltCon for you? SaltCon for me was awesome. But I didn't go. Which Um, made it awesome for us. I'm sure. I'm sure it made it all (laughs) that much better. No, no, actually, we missed you quite a bit, Dave. I would have loved to have been there. Unfortunately, they scheduled end of summer for the same weekend that I have a family reunion up in Preston, Idaho. What does that have to do with anything, Dave? <laughs> Some of us take our responsibilities seriously, Andy Poops. Check your priorities, Dave. Um, <laughs> my newly married daughter that I don't get to see all that often because she's in college down in southern Utah was going to be up with her husband at the family reunion, and I was definitely not going to miss it. Did she make it? Yes, and it was great. We also had our two granddaughters with us. They live up in Washington. We hardly ever get to see them. We had them down here for the wedding and then for the reunion. Pretty sure that if I would have ditched and gone to Salt Con, I would be divorced right now. (laughs) I I mean, we do always talk about how we need more time for games, right? Definitely free up some time for you, Dave. (laughs) (laughs) Chris Byam, our friend from the UK, when we were talking about aquatic games, suggested that we look up Aquamarine, which is a print and play game. As we were talking about this a little bit, our other friend, Brent Mayer, has this game. We tried to play it at SaltCon, didn't quite get the time to get to it, but we're very much looking forward to giving Aquamarine a try so that next time that we talk about aquatic games, provide some feedback about that. On a somber note, uh, those who remember Ryan DeCaria, who was one of the original hosts of Meeple Nation, uh, his daughter passed away just recently. She struggled with Batten's disease, made it to the age of 18, providing that opportunity for Ryan and his family to enjoy that time with her. Meeple Nation wanted to make sure that we reached out and expressed our sympathy and uh, our love to Ryan and his family in the passing of his daughter. Those of you who may know Ryan, please reach out and give him your support. Give him your love in this time. Life is a fragile thing. It's always a struggle losing those that we love. But we just wanted to express our sympathy for Ryan and hope he and his family are surviving and getting the support they need and moving on to the next stage of life. 
of life with holes in it. As always, we like to start off with some highlights. Who wants to go first? Start off, it's probably going to be mostly highlights. We do have some game okay. announcements I would love to get to. As, <laughs> and a Kickstarter I just got word of I want to talk about a little bit. It'll at least be fun to talk about. Yes, I don't think I'm backing it. And if any of you back it, I'm pretty sure I won't be playing it. But <laughs> I like It'll be fun I- to talk about. <laughs> It'll be fun to talk about, for sure. <laughs> August was a pretty fun month for games toward the beginning of August. I have a really good friend from high school, and we have kept in touch over the years. As our families have grown, we occasionally are able to get them together for games. They were coming through our area for a family reunion. They scheduled some extra time to stop in, and so we had a couple of days with them in the early part of August. We kind of had a mini board game convention. It's hot outside, and no one wanted to go out and be in the heat, so we just stayed in and played games. We played Oceans, Foundations of Rome, Deception Murder in Hong Kong, Word Slam, Trails of Tucana, Sanctum, King Domino, Juicy Fruits. There was a few others, but uh, really, really had a great time getting together with them and playing games. One of the big highlights of last month. One of my other highlights, we were sitting here at Meeple Nation HQ, looking around the room, and I was thinking, man, Nathan, you still have a lot of games still in shrink decided to start taking a few of those home. So last month I took uh, Siege of Rundar and Batman Everybody Lies home and learned those games. Played them with my family. Both of those really, really interesting games in their own right, but had a really good time playing those. Also had a chance to get my father's work to the table. The app finally came out in its finished form, and it is absolutely fantastic. One of the times that I played that, sat down with my youngest son, Brigham, And the app for this does some really, really interesting things. It presents some quandaries for the players to consider and some paths to go down, some choices to make. There was a particular moment, and I'll keep this spoiler free, but basically a choice that was presented to the players. And Brigham took the more quote-unquote good option, and I chose the more quote-unquote evil option. As the game played out, that evil option really had some negative consequences. And he was really, really mad at me for a while. But what was really cool about it is as that game wound down to its conclusion, both of our choices kind of came together in, I think, a really satisfying way. My father's work is one I'm really looking forward to getting to the table with all of you. Really, really like what they've done with that game. Yeah, I'm excited to do that one. I played it before the app was finished. I really liked it. Speaking of getting games to the table with my youngest, we also had a chance to play Waste Nights, a post-apocalyptic survival game but it's based in Australia, and you play as the Waste Knights out to solve Australia's problems. actually had a really, really good time with that one. Waste Knights does a really good job presenting players with that choose-your-own-adventure style of play. The story doesn't get too much in your way. It just sort of presents you with a problem and then says, pick A, B, or C, and then you just run with that and all the consequences that come with it. Pretty interesting to see how all of the choices you make throughout that game come to, to full fruition. For those who may not know, I'm a huge living card game player. I really love Arkham Horror, Marvel Champions, the living card games by uh, Fantasy Flight Games. But one that's eluded me for quite a while is the Lord of the Rings LCG. I jumped into that, trying to learn that system. It's a pretty complicated rule set and fairly robust system, but have had a really fun time learning that. It's a good one, and especially with the Rings of Power airing recently, it feels uh, thematic and fun to be back in Middle Earth on multiple fronts. I had a really good time playing that one. How have you liked the Ring of Power so far? I love stories. I just love stories, and I'm not a, this has to be canon I don't want to belittle anyone who holds on to that sort of strict Tolkien-based history of Middle-earth. I'm okay with the changes and everything that they did. I thought the cinematography was fantastic. I thought the soundtrack was amazing. And I have really, really loved this story so far. I'm looking forward to watching it. I haven't started it yet. My wife and I are behind the times. Starting over Stranger Things to watch the last season of Stranger Things. So, ah, When you get done with that, we'll talk. That's another one of my guilty pleasure. I love Stranger Things. That's really, really good, too. I particularly enjoyed season four. I think you'll like that. There was one scene in particular that was awesome. In season four? Was it the uh, Metallica scene? <laughs> yeah, it was really, really good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No one can hear you nod, Dave. It's okay. I was just talking to Doug. <laughs> Back to board games. 
Another fun thing we got to do as a group, we got Dead Reckoning to the table. We started playing through one of the sagas. I learned that I do not take player confrontation very well because <laughs> I got a little salty when, when Richie attacked my ship and ruined all of my well-laid plans. This is really funny because basically after that happened, which was fairly early in the game, and you're like, that just destroyed everything, and Doug won. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Maybe it was a good thing he destroyed everything, Doug. It wasn't going to work. But I could have won like two hours earlier, okay. Andy. I get it. <laughs> no, I really like Dead Reckoning. I love that card crafting system. So fun. I really appreciate what John DeClaire can do with those card crafting systems. He really has a mind for it. Where Mystic Veil, vale, I think, was kind of the pure card crafting aspect. This has card crafting mixed with a really fun game at the table. Plus, it's pirate themed and that's almost always going to be a win for me. I got to play this at SaltCon. It was my second experience. I got to play with my buddy Sam Aho. Several conventions we've been at together. We're like, hey, let's play a game. Let's play a game. And then we just never meet up. We played a game. I was super excited to play a game. It was a very long game that ended abruptly. And I was most upset how abruptly it ended. One person was just, uh, you know, he came by. He sank me, which gave him one of the achievements I already lost several battles with the merchant ship, so I was I was one flame away from sinking anyway. So he came up, he sank me, then was able to go exploring. So we had those two achievements right from the get-go. At the end of the game, he had the four achievements, and I had one achievement, and nobody else had achievements. Wow. That still blows me away how long that game was, and nobody had achievements other than you and the individual that won, which you need four achievements to win, or yeah. to end the game, rather. To end the game, yeah. It was a crazy game. It took a long time because it was a new teach. I was the only one at the table who had actually played the game, and I wasn't super keen on the rules. I'd only played it the one time before, so I wasn't able to jump in and say, hey, this is how we're playing, and this is what this does, because I didn't know the rules that well to jump in and say that. It was a long time sitting through, relearning the rules, where I could have gone with the Cliff Notes version, but... Everybody else at the table needed that. That took a long time. But the game was still fun. Really liked Dead Reckoning. I took second place. I guess that I should have taken second place. Being the only other person to have an achievement, still my second place was like 25 points behind first place. I would definitely agree with Doug on this. John declared this is his third game with the card crafting and strongest in my opinion. You know, Edge of Darkness was fun. Mystic Bell was fun. But I think this surpasses those by leaps and bounds, personally. The theme is more into it, right? For sure, yeah. I mean, thematically, it's great. It has a lot of things that normally I would not like. It has the area control. It has a little bit of direct conflict. But the way he implemented it is really well done. With the exception of Doug, most people don't take it too personally. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned my lesson. I, I won't be so salty next time. Should we change the uh, title of this episode to Dead Reckoning? Maybe. Yeah, we, we might need to. While we're on that topic, though, we do have to mention that uh, little cube tower. That ship that acts as the quote-unquote dice tower that you drop the cubes down in for combat is just fantastic. It is cool. It is great. And thank you, thank you, thank you, John DeClaire, for not making this a nerd tax game, because that's why I bought it, was the ship with the broadside cube <laughs> tower. So glad that it turned out to be an amazing game. Dead Reckoning. Highly recommended. Was able to get a couple of other games to the table that I was excited about. The Reckoners, I always love getting that one to the table. We were able to uh, add the Steel Slayer expansion that recently fulfilled from uh, Kickstarter. Like what they added to the game with that, with that expansion. Had a really good time with that. And then also, I received my copy of Keystone North America a week or so ago. This is a game by Jeffrey Joyce and Isaac Vega. I really like Isaac Vega. He did Ashes Reborn, Dead of Winter, Forgotten Waters kind of broke away and started his own company, Rose Gauntlet Games, and this was kind of their maiden voyage. Really fun ecosystem building game. I haven't really seen anything quite like it, but basically players have a 4 by 4 grid. You draft cards, and you're trying to create the strongest ecosystem in each row and column. I've only played that one once, but really had a good time. My wife liked that one a lot. Been able to get a lot of really fun games to the table. It's been a good month for gaming. My highlights are going to be super short and not really game-related. I had a very busy, super stressful month of August, and so I think it won't take long before I just have this hole in my memory where I don't really remember anything. I guess that's always kind of typical anyway for me, but my daughter Noodles got married, and it was super fun. It was awesome. It was great to see a bunch of people. We had a bunch of people from Washington come down. 
they got their invite like three days before the wedding and a bunch of them came down. And so it was really, really meant a lot. And we really appreciate that. Her husband's brothers are excellent musicians and had two brothers that provided live music and it was phenomenal. It was just really fun. That took up most of my month, the planning and preparing. And we also had our granddaughters down from Washington and that took up every second of breath while I had them. And you probably had the best food in the world at the wedding. I didn't even want to talk about it because I knew <laughs> that I, my mouth would just water the rest of the time and I might, I don't want to ruin Doug's microphone. I know this is a board game podcast, but that reception was awesome. It really was very cool. And big congratulations to Noodles and Beyonce. Thank you. So, For yeah. Ri- <laughs> <laughs> and you're right, Andy, that pork was delicious. It was delicious. And that's it. That's really it. I mean, I played some games here and there with you guys. Like you mentioned, Dead Reckoning. For me, the big highlight uh, was that toward the end of the month. Well, most of my highlights are going to be SaltCon. First and foremost, I enjoyed this the entire con. Both my girls were there the entire time. I wanted to make sure that they really wanted to be there. So I told them, you have to buy your own tickets. They both bought their own tickets for the entire con. You got to buy your own dinners. Paid for their own dinners. I bought lunch for him, but, and then they, as soon as the tickets went on sale for Salt Con Spring, they both bought tickets for Salt Con Spring. I had a ton of fun with both your daughters and Doug's daughter, Amber Lee, was there also. She spent more time at the con than Doug did. That's true. I, I had a blast with all three of them there. They're great kids. It was enjoyable to play games with them. And even my daughter showed up for a brief moment and then she was gone. It was good to at least see her there. She was there for Werewolf. Salt Con is all about having good fun with people that you don't see on a regular basis around the game table. At first, they were my little shadows. That definitely changed once Amber Lee came. Then the girls kind of clung together, which I thought was great. It was fun also to see after about halfway through the first day, they kind of went off and just started doing their own thing. They would go and look at the vendor hall or they'd go grab a game from the library and play it. It was awesome. They didn't have to have dad telling them, oh, we'll go do this, go do this. They just went and did their thing. I loved watching them just enjoy the convention. It wasn't necessarily about... Being there with dad, it was just, they were just having fun. Seeing them have a love for board games, similar to my passion for it, was really enjoyable for me as their dad to see. I get that. I've got a big kick out of Amara, who kept going to the game swap area and buying games for her personal collection. (laughs) Yes, I had to rein her in Yeah, quite a bit. She came back with a copy of Scarabia. Why did you buy that? Your dad already owns three copies so that we can play at 12 players, and I own two copies, why would you buy another one? Oh, this one's mine. This one's going to be in my collection. It's going to be in my room, and it's going to be my game. So I thought that was pretty neat. She's dedicated enough to the hobby to try to pick up some of those games on her own. She's starting pretty early, so she's only 18, but she already has several games in her collection, and she added to that for sure during SaltCon. And just like that, she has a bigger collection than I do. That is true, David. <laughs> Amberly had a great time hanging out with your daughters, and I had a, a very similar experience. It's kind of nice when your kids get old enough to drive. We left quite late the second night, and I was tired, and so I had her drive. But she was so into it and just jazzed about the whole weekend and how it went that she made me buy her uh, Salt Con Spring ticket on the ride home that night. So, oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for not driving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was happy to do so. Loop and Louie was one of the games we hosted. My girls actually asked to get that game out a couple of more times during the convention, and Sierra thought the world of that game. She just giggled every time we played it. She's like, it was so fun to see all these adults and little kids and everybody just giggling, playing this game, and it's just such a simple game. So she went home, said, Dad, I found it on Amazon. I want two copies. Okay, I bought her two copies. Now I said, well, you got to talk to James and get some 3D printed pieces to make it all so it's an eight-player game. And she's like, yep, I'm going to do that too. So it was really fun to see her super excited about that. I hosted, was set to host three games. I hosted Wasteland Express Delivery Service, Meeples and Monsters, and Sewer Pirates. And all those I had a ball hosting. I was able to play two of the three of those. There was a game that I wasn't assigned to host. I ended up hosting, and that was Past the Big Pigs. That was one of the funnest games I hosted at the convention. Three ladies that signed up, and oh my gosh, they were hilarious. Two of them were sisters and one was just a friend. They were getting way into it. Apparently, they had the original version of Pass the Pigs. They had so much fun playing Pass the Big Pigs. So we played four games, and it was a a four-way tie. Every one of us had won one game. So we had to do a tiebreaker to find out who actually won. Such a good experience, such a fun experience. I was not expecting to have such an enjoyable experience playing Pass the Big Pigs. 
I had a lot of fun with that in spring. We were sitting a table down, and it was just nothing but laughs coming from that table the whole time. It looked like you guys were having a blast. It was really fun. A couple more highlights. My daughter always asks me every single week. In fact, she usually texts me a couple of times on Thursday just to remind me, asking me if she can go to game night on Thursday, Nathan's game night. But I have schools. So I get out a little bit later, so we show up late. Well, there's usually a game going on when we get here, so her and I just kind of sit down at the other table and play a game. We've actually had the opportunity to play Ecos a few times, and she loves that game. We haven't played it in over a year at least to break out Ecos again, see her enjoy it, both of us enjoy that game, and then to bring the expansion into it for the first time. None of us had ever played your expansion, Nathan. It was fun to play the expansion for Ecos. We got to play Project L. I absolutely love this game and it was another one i knew my daughter sierra would love doug i think you told me that that's lydia's new favorite game right oh yeah we busted that out a couple weeks ago and she just fell in love with it almost instantly she really likes that game yeah a lot of people compare it to number nine but fun (laughs) (laughs) well i've never played number nine project l was great When it becomes available, I'm definitely going to pick up a copy, and I think Sierra wants to pick up a copy for herself. That was another game that she's like, I have to have a copy of this game. We just had date night, actually just last night. I asked Lydia, I said, well, what do you want to do? And she said, well, whatever we do, we have to start by playing Project L. That's what I want to do first. That's what we ended up doing the entire time. Really, really fun game. And my final highlight, Doug introduced me anyway to Zombicide 2nd Edition, and I loved that game so much I had to get my own copy. Picked up Zombicide. I haven't played it yet. Opened up the base game. My goal is to get one of the expansions played before Doug busts into his expansion. So those are my highlights. It was a great month. Hopefully, Andy, we can get those expansions played at the same time. That's true. That would be cool. It would just need to be mine because I have to get mine played before yours. (laughs) You've got to break it in. Yeah, for sure. So I talked about my wife playing games, and uh, I even wrote a, wrote a blog about games on Board Game Arena with my wife and how I created a monster. Just to give an example of that, in the month of August, I played 144 games. 112 of those games were with my wife. Her and I have been playing a lot of games. It's awesome. I've actually changed my new goal. I want to make it so that Cheryl is the person I've played the most games with. Currently a spot my daughter holds. Dave's creeping up on that because weddings are lame. Dave is lame and not <laughs> taking his turns on games. Also, each year I have a goal to get 150 games played with my wife. We crush that. I'm usually fighting to get that done at the end of the year, which my wife doesn't really like when I start pushing games on her. I've already played our 150 games for the year. Because of that, I've already met my 500 games for the year. I'm on track. I'm probably going to get over 1,000 games played this year. Seems like a lot. You should do a new goal where your uh, total games played is at least equal to your total games owned. I might do that this year. I might reach that threshold. But also from that same blog post, our friend Trent Howell from the board game family, hey, we should play some games. So uh, we've been playing some Potion Explosion. Apparently I'm terrible at I mean, he just mops the floor with me. And we've also been playing a new game to me called Butterfly. The board is composed of tiles of different bugs. There's butterflies, wasps, bees. You can move orthogonally across the board, and wherever you stop, you're going to draw that tile. You want to get tiles that are going to work together and avoid collecting any wasps, because wasps is just a fun word to say, because you have to say the psss afterwards. (laughs) But uh, they give you negative points. Butterfly was an interesting game. It's one I'm going to have to look up, see if I can find a physical copy of. As far as highlights of what we played at SaltCon, we played a game of Night of the Ninja, which is a 4 to 11 player game. And we had 11 players, and the game says it's supposed to last between 15 and 30 minutes. Lies. Very much a lie. It was like I was playing with 11 other Daves. That game went on. That must have been amazing. It was not amazing. Actually, it was <laughs> it was very amazing. It was hilarious. I enjoyed that game thoroughly, but it was almost two hours. Oh, that's too long. Yeah, that's too long for the. I I love Night of the Ninja. I think it's great, but that is so too long. But hilarity was all around the table. Good fun, good times. I wouldn't have missed that opportunity for nothing. Also, got a chance to play Welcome to the Moon, which is uh, Welcome to's latest version. 
different take on Welcome To. So it's kind of like Welcome To New Las Vegas was a little bit different than just the Welcome To theme. Welcome To Bread and Butter that's there, trying to load up a rocket to prepare it for launch. You're trying to collect rockets, and whoever gets to 150 rockets, that means their rocket is ready to launch. and They can launch. There's ways that you can attack the rest of their table, cause them grief. Overall, really enjoyed it. And then the night before, Sawcon got the chance to play Oath, Chronicles of Empire and Exile, which from the same group that did Root. I had a lot of fun with this game. We didn't quite we didn't quite finish it the way it was supposed to finish. We had some learning issues. One of the people walked away from the table because it was past his bedtime. The game was good. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to playing it again. But then we played a game of Ark Nova after that. That went till 2 a.m., and then we had the con the next morning. I had that pre-con tired that went all the way through the con, but that game of Ark Nova was great. It's a good game. I'm terrible at that one, too. I'm terrible at a lot of games, but I sure have a lot of fun losing. I really want to play that one again. I only got to play it the one time. It was Dennis who actually taught it to us, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I really want to get that one to the table again. I love it. I agree. We should get it to the table for sure. If I had a nickel for every time we've said that. Yeah. I could take everyone out for dinner at least. Let's talk about some new games. we got a little bit of time here at the end. New games that are coming out have been both announced and games that can be found in the wild. we got to save a little bit of room for this Kickstarter that's coming out next month that uh, I'm excited to talk about. Not excited to play, but excited to talk <laughs> about. And if you are Clank fans, there's a new Clank standalone game that is coming out. This is Clank Catacombs. Combining the Clank you know and love with a tile lane mechanic. Instead of just having a board, you actually flip over tiles to build a dungeon as you're dungeon delving down into the, for lack of a better term, dungeon. I like Clank in Space a little bit more than just the regular Clank game. Blasphemy. That being said, the fact that the board now becomes randomized, that may push me back to non-space version of Clank. Nice thing is, is it's compatible with all the regular Clank expansions too. So you can add all those cards to your deck, even though this is a standalone game, it's still compatible, which I thought was great. Honestly, this is something that should have happened to Clank a long time ago. That whole system just begs for randomness. And you can kind of work around that because they do have quite a few map packs out. This modular system of being able to randomize it every time you play down through the depths, that's a no-brainer. Ups the replayability substantially, in my opinion. Yeah. I am excited about anything Clank. So down through the depths, ups the replayability. Yes. No, the randomness ups the replayability. okay. (laughs) On my radar is a game called Ahoy. Two to four player game, plays up to 75 minutes. And you'll like this. It's an asymmetrical game for two to four players that they take on the roles of swashbucklers and soldiers seeking fame on the high seas. One player controls the Blue Fin Squadron, which is a company of sharks and their toothy friends. They patrol the waters to keep order. Another player controls Mollusk Union, an alliance of undersea creatures and their comrades in arms who fight to reclaim their ancestral home. In games with more people, some players control the smugglers, mavericks, captains who run blockades and smuggle luxuries and essentials, delivering them to those with the most need or those who have the most coin. What I'm excited about this is it gives me that vibe of Merchant's Cove, Root, where everybody's playing the same game, but they're playing it differently. I really enjoy playing Root, and I really enjoy Merchant's Cove, how those different games all come together in a meta game. Games that provide that are really big on my radar right now. I'm looking forward to giving this a try. That is Ahoy. Yeah, you're seeing a lot more of those come out. I love it. It's interesting, right? I still haven't played through all the Merchants in Merchant's Cove. So whenever anybody says, hey, let's play Merchant's Cove, I am 100% down. I want to try a different merchant. And now they have new merchants coming out with the Kickstarter that just launched. I am very excited for a game like this that's going to have something similar to Root and to Merchant's Cove. I think it's great. So a game that's been on my radar for a little while, and let me just read this tagline and see if this doesn't draw you in a little bit. Explore the tombs of ancient steampunk Egypt and revel in the mysteries of Arkees. 
I love this idea of exploring that steampunk version of Egypt. This looks like a really, really fun game. I know they're getting very close to fulfillment on this. This was a Kickstarter. It uses some fantastic 3D terrain. The minis look great. And it has tight, story-driven, cooperative campaign mode. And it offers tight, story-driven, cooperative campaign. One of the things that drew me to back this one was just the designers involved with this project. This is being done by Antoine Bauza, Takanoko, Seven Wonders, Ghost Stories, Hanabi. Pretty amazing list for him. And he's working in collaboration with Corentin Lebrant, who recently did Draftosaurus, Flying Goblins, Ninja Academy. You've also got Ludovic Mablanc, who did uh, Conan, Mr. Jack, and Cyclades, as well as Theo Riviere, who also worked on Draftosaurus and has done work on the Unlock series and more recently did The Loop design sort of pedigree on this one really, really drew me in. And that was kind of what tipped me over the edge on backing this one. So I'm looking forward to it quite a bit. I'm really glad you backed this because I was on the edge. I didn't end up backing it. So I'm really glad that you did. Awesome. Well, we'll definitely get it to the table. I'm not typically a fan of super quick games, super simple games. I like a lot of the meat bulk and the deep strategy, but there's a game called Town 66, 15 minute game for one to four players extremely simple and is one that I think would be cool to play with some of my family and it's not huge gamers. A good filler game that would actually be enjoyable. In this game, you're building houses. Everybody has tiles that are just different blueprints for these houses. I know when you think about blueprints, that doesn't seem simple. It is extremely simple. Like I said, there are six different house designs and six different colors. So you have 36 different tiles in the game. The first player of the game will place one of their tiles in the upper left corner of an imaginary 6 by 6 square, and then each player will play orthogonally adjacent to a tile that is already there. The caveat is the citizens of Town 66 do not like houses of the same color or of the same shape in the same row or column. And so you have to strategize where you want to play your tiles. After you play a tile, you can choose to draw another tile. First player to place all of their tiles wins the game. Pretty simple, really straightforward and basic game, but it seems like it's going to be pretty fun. All right, our friend Corey DeCaria just jumped in the door. It's our regular game night. We had a holiday that threw off our groove, and so we're trying to do this episode on a non-regular night. Say hi real quick, Corey. Howdy. I think you'll like this, Corey. This is something that a new Kickstarter that should be coming out next month. I said at the first of the episode, this is not one that I'm thinking I will back. I'm, I know I will not be backing it. I will. Will you? <laughs> I <laughs> kind of hope you do, actually. <laughs> but it's not one that I think, think we'll play, but I really like the idea of this. There's other games out there, like I just got the shipping notification for my They Live Assault on Cable 54 rendition of cult classic film from the 80s, They Live you get some of those themes that are there draw me in for nostalgic reasons i think this game is going to do for me coming out in october is the official monty python rpg the quest for the holy grail the idea of this game has me going okay this could be a lot of fun this movie came out in 1975 so it's been around for a day or two the people that are going to be seeking out and playing this game are going to be a bunch of old guys all I see is a table repeating really lame quotes quotes from the movie that aren't so lame. In fact, it was funny. We bought a house recently, had my mom move in with us so that we could take care of her in her waning years. And I come home from work and I hear this music coming from the other room. Who is watching Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Dun, ta, dun, ta, da, da, dun, exactly. Dun, ta, dun, ta, da, da, dun. <laughs> oh, I go into the other room. And there's my mom watching Monty Python and the Holy Grail. My 87-year-old mom, what are you watching? She says, I don't know. It was just on. It came on, so I watched it. <laughs> Only one of the best movies ever made. And I sat there and watched it with her. Started laughing at things before they happened. But So my question to you, Corey, is what do you think of this game? Does this game excite you? And do you think gameplay would be different than what I think gameplay would be? So it's a role-playing game, yes. not, not a dungeon crawler or a board game right, role-playing yeah. style storytelling game. Okay. I don't know. I think I'd rather play Dungeons & Dragons, something like that, rather than 
relive the Holy Grail. But that's just me. I think for me, it will really depend on what the price point is for this Kickstarter. If this is cheap enough that you feel like you could get some value out of just a quick like one shot, just a one night adventure, I think it'd be worth it. Sit down and try to do like a whole campaign in this world, I think might be a little rough. And I have kind of the same thought that Nathan does in that I feel like a lot of the games would just devolve into people quoting the movie all night and and you wouldn't actually play much of the actual game. Devolve is the appropriate word. (laughs) Game night would definitely devolve. The game has light rule set and is designed for one-shot sessions and shorter campaigns. I still think it'd be fun to do and maybe something to do once. And exactly like you're saying, Doug, if the price point is okay enough that it's not going to break the bank and it's okay for just a fun one-off night, maybe that'd be worth the $15, $20 or however much it's going to be. Kickstarter exclusives coming with the Killer Bunny or maybe the Holy Hand Grenade. It could be fun with, if it was a GM-less role-playing game, you don't have to do any preparation. You just throw it down and start reading and have fun around the table. But if there's like a lot of prep in the background and for a GM, I don't know if it would work for me. I know I'm trying to put together a campaign for G.I. Joe. And for that, I've done a lot of research and done a lot of work to put together a storyline, an arc, a story arc that can consist of multiple episodes. I mean, the resource material that's there for Monty Python, not so deep. You know, there's concern. I think you nail it right on the head. If it's a simple DM-less experience, it can maybe de-evolve to uh, just a game night of hilarity. It'd be worth it. So maybe that's something worth trying. I call playing the Black Knight. It's just a flesh wound. (laughs) So I think we're going to cut it off there. There was a lot of highlights from SaltCon and a whole lot of highlights for August. A lot of games played, except for Dave. August was a great month. September's looking good, except for, unfortunately, Corey's going back to New Jersey. We'll leave a big hole in our game rules and our game nights on Thursdays. Kind of like a donut hole. In yes, our Thursday no more night. donuts. <laughs> We will miss your presence here, Corey. We've enjoyed playing and look forward to visits and seeing you at the game table in the future. Until next time, we'll see you at the game table. We really do love our patrons. And we really do love our patrons. All right, so let... There's there's all right. So, so uh, I, I like to proceed all right with so. <laughs> all right, but here's, but here's the deal. deal.